Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to the Scan Tool Network. I know that your time is precious, so let's get straight into six things that you need to know before buying a diagnostic scan tool. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you my recommendation for which tool I would personally go for and recommend to you guys. Now, there are so many reasons for wanting to buy one of these tools. You know, lots of reasons like turning off a check engine light, airbag light, ABS light, looking at live data from the car, doing a DPF regeneration, or simply switching off an oil light. So it's quite difficult to maybe understand which tool you should go for because there are so many tools on the market. It's such a wide variation of functions and tools available on the market. So hopefully this video will give you a better idea about the type of tool that you need to go for. So number one on the list, the first thing that we're gonna look at is tool capability. We get a lot of messages saying, you know, I've bought this diagnostic tool, but it doesn't cover this system or this system. It's very important that you get a tool which covers your specific needs. For example, if you have an airbag light, it's completely pointless going out and buying a cheap five pound code reader, which only covers the engine system. It's not gonna cover the airbag light and it's not gonna cover any of the other systems in the car. So right from the off, it's very important to maybe look through the listing and make sure that the tool itself is gonna cover the systems that you're, you're looking to cover. So, you know, if you have an airbag light, look in the listing, does the listing state that it covers the ABS system or uh, ESP it might be known as, or the traction control system. Those systems are all linked together, so if it covers one, it's gonna cover the other. The same applies if you want to do DPF regeneration on your vehicle. Make sure the listing states that it will do DPF regeneration on your vehicle. If you're not 100% sure, ask the seller, that's what they're there for. So number two on the list is the price of the tool. This can be a really big factor in deciding what tool you actually go for. But here's a top tip for you. If you only need to diagnose a check engine light, we've got a flashing check engine light, you don't need to go and buy an expensive tool. You don't need to go and buy a tool which costs two or 300 pounds or two or 300 dollars because the check engine light tools, they are really very cheap. This is one of them. I'll put the link to this kit in the description below this video. But you don't need to go and buy a tool which has, you know, ABS capabilities or airbag capabilities just to diagnose a check engine light. If you do need a tool which covers more systems, then sure, you know, you are gonna need a more advanced tool. It is gonna cost you a little bit more. Those tools will generally cost you maybe around about 100 pounds to 100 or $130, whichever location you're in. But like I say, check engine light only. If you're only interested in that, you can get a much lower value tool. Now, number three on the list is updates and update costs. You need to know which scan tools will give you free updates and which scan tools you will need to pay for updates. Generally, I would say scan tools under around about the 400 pound mark or it's like $530, something like that, you'll probably get free updates, but it is certainly worth looking at and maybe asking the seller or making sure you find the print on the listing to make sure you know whether it does have free updates or indeed you will have to pay for the free update, pay for the updates, should I say. Now it's great if you can get free updates because it means you're always gonna get access to the latest software. It's gonna add newer vehicles onto your tool at all times at every single update. So um, best off going for a tool if you can for free updates if you maybe get a tool for over the 400 pound marks you're probably expecting to pay maybe around about say 130 which is about 170 dollars per year for an update so bear that in mind the up the, the free updates they're generally aimed at tools which are kind of diys or the tools which have uh, paid updates generally aimed at garages, workshops, mobile mechanics. This here is a great package. It's the MK808 kit by Autel. Again, I'll put the link to this in the description below. Uh, currently retailing at 400 pounds. You get the first year's updates for free, but after that you pay 130 pounds per year. You don't have to go for the updates every single year. You can maybe skip a year. The tool will still work as normal, but if you want to get access to the latest software updates, then you are going to have to subscribe to another year's updates. As I say though, check the listing information. It should say whether you get free updates for life or if it says free updates for the first year, it's generally an indication that you are going to have to pay for updates after the first year is up. Number four on the list is the fact that it's quite common for people to think that these tools are a little bit of a magic pill. And when I say that, I mean people think that if you've got a warning light, let's say you've got an airbag warning light on your dashboard, 
People think that you can just pick up one of these tools, go into the car and just simply reset the airbag light just like that. Well, that can be the case in some circumstances. 99% of the time, that's not how it works. The airbag light is on the dashboard for a reason. It's there because there was a fault with the car. And it really doesn't matter whether you've got a 100 pound tool or a 10,000 pound tool, you know, the ethics of diagnostics are the same no matter what kind of tool you use. If there's still a problem with that car, the tool cannot remove that warning light. So just so you know, if you do have a fault with your car, you will need to fix the problem before you can turn off the warning light. Some cases, as I say, if you've got a check engine light and the fault is intermittent, then yes, you can probably get away with turning off the warning light. But if it's an intermittent fault, the chances are, you know, maybe two or three months down the line, it'll only come back and you will eventually need to take action on that fault. Okay, number five, let's say you've bought one of these scan tools, you've found the fault, you've got an airbag light on your dashboard, you've found the fault, and you give the fault codes to your mechanic and say, by the way, here's the fault codes, please fix this car. That's generally not how it'll work because the mechanics will have their equipment, which they trust, and the chances are they are gonna to wanna to use their equipment just to double check that that is the correct fault code and that is and what the reason behind that fault is. So don't expect to be able to just hand them a bit of paper and say, by the way, this is the fault because they're gonna check with their own tools and they're gonna charge you for it as well. These tools are probably gonna work best if you're gonna be diagnosing the fault yourself and you're gonna give it a go at fixing it yourself. I suppose an upside of diagnosing the fault yourself before you give the car to the mechanic is that you can get an idea of what the fault is before you give it to them. So you know in the long run that you're not gonna be ripped off and the fault that is present on the car is what the mechanic is also uh, reporting. Now number six is simply understanding which diagnostic manufacturers and software developers are actually trusted. Because there are manufacturers and software developers who actually design and develop the software themselves, and there are other companies who simply copy and rip off other people's software and put it in their own tools. So two of the manufacturers that I would highly recommend are iCarsoft, these are a very good manufacturer, and also Autel as well. These are two of the top manufacturers when it comes to DIY tools. Um, I'm not gonna mention, because I don't wanna go rubbishing any of the other brands. I'm just saying that if you want a tool that knows their stuff and you want a, a manufacturer that knows about these diagnostics, then iCarsoft and Autel are two of the main brands uh, when it comes to this field. They generally offer better software, better support, and if there is a problem with you know, one of these tools linking to a vehicle, they can generally go away, work out the software, and update the new software to the tool. I can't say that it always happens because you know with electronics you're always going to have glitches and slight niggles along the way but generally 99% of the time these two brands they're going to they're going to pull through for you. So I mentioned at the start of the video that I was going to personally recommend a tool. I'll recommend two tools in fact. The first one is this one here. It's the iCarsoft CR Pro. Highly recommended, covers a lot of cars, a lot of systems within those cars, also a lot of special functions like uh, diesel particulate filter, service reset, electronic parking brake, steering angle sensor, injector coding, ABS brake bleeding, and many more. Uh, this tool is currently reaching, it's around about 260 pounds, probably just about $300. Um, the second tool is this one here, no, it's this one here, sorry. It's the Autel MK808 kit. This, this kit here is probably aimed at um, maybe home DIYers or home users who have a lot of cars to look after. This kit here is probably aimed at the same, but also additionally, maybe small garages, small workshops, because it does have a lot more special functions. It has a lot more vehicle coverage and a lot more system coverage as well. Either way though, the CR Pro from iCarsoft or the MK808 from Autel, these are the two tools I would highly, highly recommend because we've used these on every single car we've had and we've never once had any bit of trouble. So um, I can say that hand on heart, these are two very good tools. I'll put the links to these, as I say, in the description below this video. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've taken something from it. I'll see you next time on the Scan Tool Network.